Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to talk about things that are hyped up, that are worth it. Um, because I also want to do a video on things that are hyped up, that are not worth it. Um, I don't keep a lot of things that are not worth it, so they go back to the store. Um, but I definitely still have some things hanging around that are not worth the hype. So I'm going to do this one, positive one first, and then we'll do the negative one. <laughs> but basically, I have some things that lots of people have talked about and said that they love. And I can give you my honest opinion and tell you that these things are worth the money indeed. I know when you're going to go and make a purchase for a higher end luxurious product, it costs a lot of money. And I don't know about you, but I usually do re research. I usually watch several different people's videos, people that have similar skin tones to me, similar makeup styles to me, and even people that don't have similar tastes, just to get their take on it, you know, to get enough reviews. Kind of like when you go to make a big purchase, uh, like a new car. I mean, you're not just going to go in and, I mean, I hope not, <laughs> go by the first car that you test drive. But um, these things are worth it to me. So if you are interested in seeing what's worth it, then and uh, hang tight. I'm gonna start off with the one skincare product that I have here. I'm going to be doing, if I haven't already posted it, I will be posting it soon, my daytime skincare routine. I really changed my skincare routine and I've noticed a huge difference. I have done my nighttime skincare routine. I'll link that below if I did it. If not, it'll be up soon. Um, I think I already did it though, so I'll have that below or in a card. But I just, I, I have found some things that have truly worked and there, some of the things that I have purchased are definitely talked a lot about on YouTube here and I have opinions about them. So the first thing that I think is absolutely worth the money is a, a vitamin C serum. Um, just that, that category in general, you need to be using a vitamin C serum on your skin in the morning. What that helps do is it helps brighten and give a very radiant, um, just healthy glow to your skin. And I've just noticed such a difference in the daytime. Even when I don't wear makeup, my skin just looks healthy and glowy and just childlike. And it is due to the serum. Ule Henriksen, his Truth Serum Vitamin C Collagen Booster. I have tried that. It looks like this, or I can insert a picture for you. Um, I have tried this, but I felt it to be a little bit too oily, a little bit too heavy. So this product that um, I picked up, I'm loving. This is the Drunk Elephant C Firm A Day Serum Firm and Brighton. This is what the bottle looks like. It is so cute. When you get the box, the inside of the box has zebra stripes on it. It is just such a cute packaging. Um, it's got this beautiful bright orange. Um, it's just fun. <laughs> you twist this up like that. That is how you use it. So I think it's a very neat little mechanism here. But basically, vitamin C, it says, packed with powerful antioxidant complex, essential nutrients, fruit enzymes, and an anti-aging chronopeptide that trams forms into vitamin D, which works synergistically to firm and brighten skin while preventing and correcting photo damage and aging. So if you have age spots, sunspots, over time this is going to help lighten those and correct that all over your face. I have a few of those because I used to lay out, I was that girl in the baby oil, in the lawn chair in the backyard, hours, just hours. I'd read so many books and I was so tan and I looked so good. Stop doing that if you're young and doing that. It is not good for you because then later on you're going to wonder, what are all those lines on my face? Um, anyways, I'm loving this. It's lighter weight. It's not oily. It doesn't make, like it works well with other products that I put on my face in the daytime. It works well with makeup. I just, I'm really enjoying it. Um, the key ingredients in here are 15% ascorbic acid, hyaluronic cross polymer, ferulic acid, ferulic acid, which is also a great that is in the AHA category of alpha hydroxy acids and then there's beta hydroxy acids. The alpha hydroxy acids basically help turn uh, your cell turnover quickly. When you're young it happens quickly and your skin just always looks so great but as we age like we lose it and things get slower and slower. So that helps your skin turn things over quickly and get rid of um, dead skin, dry skin, helps clear up everything. So that's a great ax um, ingredient. And then it has pumpkin ferment extract. No idea what that is. All I know is I've seen a difference with this. I think this is worth the hype. I, I love this particular formula and I think you definitely need to be using a vitamin C serum in your skincare. If you're not using one, add it to your regimen. Let's get into makeup because I have a good amount of things here and I've already talked for so long. Okay, I just can't make a short video. It's just never going to happen. <laughs> so if you're tuning in for a five minute video, mm, I'm not your woman. All right, so let's kind of go in order of how we would apply the makeup. So I did a full demo and review on this foundation. And 
the other day I wore this and I think I posted a picture on Instagram and someone had asked are you wearing foundation because your skin just looks flawless and evened out but it doesn't look like you're wearing anything and I was and this is what I'm wearing um, I will link that demo and review below but basically totally worth the hype this is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea water foundation it has an SPF of 15 very lightweight amazing coverage in a small amount it makes your skin like it gets rid of any discoloration you may have it's not heavy um, it, it is made of like there's a good amount of water in this so it just I don't know it just marries to your skin so well your skin never looks makeup-y and that is the key to this foundation it just looks natural but even doubt and that is a look that I really enjoy I am in the shade light neutral that's what this shade is right here and I love it. I think it's totally worth the hype. It's not even that expensive. I want to say it's around $39, which for a high-end foundation, that is, that's a good price. And I've had this since February, and I've only used that much of it. A little does go a long way. It's a beautiful bottle, and this is so worth the hype. A gorgeous, beautiful foundation. I know a lot of my friends personally have been obsessed with this. It's just, if you're looking for something that's not going to be... I mean, you can build this up to a pretty good amount of coverage, in my opinion. You can also do it very lightly, but if you're looking for something that doesn't look like makeup, that looks like just fresh, clean, evened out skin, give this a go. This next thing blew me out of the water. That's a high claim, but truly. Um, if you were to open up my drawer and see all the powders I've accumulated, you would think that I am a person who needs a lot of powder, goes through a lot of powder, likes powder. And indeed, I am not. Um, but I like... A powder that doesn't look like a powder but yet does what a powder should do which is to set your makeup keep it in place I don't want it to settle into my fine lines and get cakey I don't even want a powder to look like a powder uh, but I want it to act like one you know what I mean so this this if you are aging if your skin is aging we're all aging but if you have more mature skin especially this powder is made for you it's gonna fill in your fine lines it really gets rid of any sort of pores on your uh, face I've set my whole face with this today and every time I use it I'm just like man this is such good stuff this is the by Terry hyaluronic hydro powder it has hyaluronic acid in it which basically is a it's like this thing that helps carry moisture um, it helps make things hydrating <sighs> It's so good. You don't even need very much of this. A little goes a long way. I actually like to apply this with my beauty, blend, beauty blender. So I'll apply my concealer and then um, blend it out with the damp beauty blender. And then I'll take that same beauty blender, dip it into the powder, and the dampness of the sponge actually helps, believe it or not, to get your uh, powder to really sink into your skin and not just sit on top of it. But anyways, it's translucent. There's no color. It is white, but it's not going to leave a white cast. Okay? So for instance, the Tarte smooth operator powder I've had that um, that leaves a white cast so I didn't like that because even on lighter skin it's like what is that bright white underneath your eyes and definitely wouldn't work for darker skin tones you'd look ashy and terrible um, but it is translucent and it just it just goes right into the skin it leaves no residue it's so finely milled it's so silky it's very luxurious but so worth the money because why put a cheap powder on your face and just age yourself why? You know what I mean? That would make me not want to put makeup on because I would look worse after. You know what I mean? But if you're oily or if you're like me and I need to set my concealer so it doesn't move around, especially in the humidity outside, I don't want it to just dissipate into, into thin air. Now I have like full face and like weird dark circles. This is gorgeous. It is beautiful. It is so worth the money. And um, yeah, you should definitely try this. Let's move on to eyes because I noticed I have quite a few eye things here. Let's talk about tools, okay? Um, I'm a believer in having the right tools. Over the course of the years of me playing in makeup, I have brushes from all different price points, right? And I've decided that, especially for me, I need a tool that I don't have to work so hard to blend out my makeup. Um, and for me, sitting down and doing my makeup is an experience. I usually have my coffee or a glass of wine. Um, it's just the time that I enjoy to take for myself. Even when I was working, I would get up early and have that quiet time in the morning to put my makeup on, listen to music. There's just something about starting your day off on the right foot. Um, and so having tools that just blend out your makeup effortlessly and feel good on your skin, I think are so, so worth it. So 
I wanted to mention the Wayne Goss brushes. I think they are absolutely worth it. Mine are full of cat hair because she has decided to come up here and rub her face on them because she's like, oh, they're so soft. They are so soft. So I also wanted to mention that I purchased all of mine off of Beautylish and um, I'm not affiliated with Beautylish, just so you know. I'm just, I buy a lot of things from them because their shipping is amazing, their customer service is great, and they carry a lot of really nice brands. But if you make a $100 purchase or more, they have a payment plan, which is like freaking phenomenal. I already am eyeing up some things to um, do on the next pay payment plan here. But um, you, if you do a $100 purchase or more, they'll split your payment up into three monthly payments. So essentially it's like 30 some dollars a month they charge a card. That's how I purchased these two most recent br brushes. I just bought like around $100 and paid monthly for three months. So these brushes, so worth it. Um, I bought his collection, which is a set of eye brushes and a few face brushes. Um, I've also purchased a few of his individual eye brushes and then these two are my more recent purchases. So the eye brushes are absolutely worth it. They are natural haired brushes. You do need to take you don't need to wash these all the time like you do synthetic brushes. Unless you're a makeup artist and you're using these brushes on a lot of people, they probably wouldn't hold up as well because they are natural haired brushes and, you know, you need to take care of your hair. Like, you, you shampoo and condition it, but if you do it a lot, you know, your hair can kind of dry and the bristles, you know. So it's important to uh, take care of these better. And I guess if you're a makeup artist, I probably wouldn't use these on other people, I would reserve these for yourself. Plus, once you get these, you're not going to want to use these on every other person. Um, so, you do want to take good care of these. I do want to mention that, basically, it's a luxurious product. It's natural hair. You're going to want to condition it and be kind to it. So, the number two brush is what I usually use to set my under eye concealer. You can also use this for highlighter. You can pretty much do whatever you want with it. It is a nice more dense brush. You could probably even contour with this if you wanted. Um, it's just so soft. The number two brush is great. His eye collection is great. These are a few that you can purchase in his eye collection. This is the number four, the number uh, five, and the number six. So there are three of them right there. And then I had recently purchased the number 14 this past summer. I've been loving this for mineral powder foundation on top of my liquid foundation. This is also just a really soft, it's just a great blush to blend out harsh edges. And it's so soft and it doesn't move around any existing product. That's what I love about it. And then the fan brush. This is the number 20, no, 15. So soft. I mean, it's thick enough this way that you can blend it like this, but yet apply you know, your highlighter like that. So I love that I can apply and blend out versus say, like this is just a little bit flimsier, it's not as thick, it's harder. Sorry, I'm trying to like, how do I show you? Is that in focus? Um, it's it's thinner, it just, I don't know, it's too flimsy. It just, I don't know, it's too hard to blend out. I love this, it's just oh, so soft. I have been using this brush nonstop for my lower lash line. If you do any sort of eyeshadow application on your lower lash line, this is the you, you need this brush and it is spendy. Trust me. I've looked at it a few times and I thought about buying it. I'm like, man, that's a lot of money for one brush. It's worth it. Okay? This replaces every other pencil brush I've ever used. Um like for real. Like I don't reach for anything else. <laughs> this is just wonderful. It doesn't tug. It doesn't move around this. The, the thin skin down here, you don't want to be doing anything crazy down here because it's very thin skin and you don't want to like encourage wrinkles. You know what I mean? This is the uh, Chiki Hodo Z-10 brush. This is what it looks like. It's so soft. It comes to a really nice point so you can really get the eyeshadow in here and then blend it out and it doesn't move any skin around. It is just, it's just a nice little brush. And I love that it's that shorter handle because you don't, if you have a too long of a pencil brush, for instance, let me just grab the one I despise, which is the Sigma one. It's scratchy and harsh. It doesn't blend worth a crap. Seriously, it doesn't. Every time I use it, I'm like, why am I using this? It scratches my eyes and I'm just like, this is so not pleasant. I really need to throw it away, but I keep keeping it to, uh, reference you know what I mean so this is much larger but you can't blend out anything with this thing it is so freaking stiff and it's it's scratchy and it's just terrible terrible this is amazing this is worth it all right this was in my ride or die if you love matte eyeshadows 
or you're looking for an all matte palette to incorporate in with your other eyeshadow collection, you're going to reach for this every day because it has every color in it that you would need for a warm look, a cool look, a natural look, a glamorous look. It's just, it's pretty much a staple and it's the Viseart Neutral Matte Palette. I do not own any of the other ones just because I find that I don't know, like the dark matte one kind of intrigues me, but at the same time, I wouldn't use the dark greens or the dark blues too much, but these, I use all these colors. I love this palette. In fact, this is one of those palettes where you just leave it out because you know you're going to use it the next day. You know what I mean? Like I set my MAC painterly every day with these types of colors before I go in with anything else and, and they just blend. They blend and but this conjunction here, the Wayne Goss brushes and this palette, I mean, it's like, you feel like you're a makeup artist because you're just blending away and all of a sudden you're like, bam, I have some good makeup. But, but when you have a good tool and you have a good eyeshadow, it's like magic happens and your eyeshadow's done in a third of the time and you look more amazing than if you had struggled with a bad tool and a bad eyeshadow. So this next eyeshadow is, I love the color, okay? I'm choosing it because I love the color. It's unique. <sighs> They're so buttery so creamy a little goes a long way you can build these up in intensity you can do a sheer wash of color the formulation is fantastic it's not a line that ha is going to get your wild colors but it's going to have your staple colors and because the formula is so good it's worth it to buy a color or two that you think you would use all the time because once again you're going to reach for it i reach for things that work i don't reach for things that i struggle with um Whatever it is in life, I reach for things that work for me. And this is the Burberry eyeshadow. It comes in a cute little velvet pouch, but I don't see a point in keeping those, so I throw those away. Some of you might be like, oh, but why? It's just an extra step to have to take it off, and then it gets all dirty anyways. Um, but, but it is pretty as a gift. Um, the packaging is so exquisite. I love Burberry's packaging. Ooh, I have to grab one more thing from Burberry. That's totally worth the hype. Um, but this is a... You know, it's heavy duty. This is not cheap packaging. So when you're getting some more luxurious packaging, you're paying for that. Yes, but it's not going to break. It's not going to fall apart. You know what I mean? It's substantial. I've traveled with this several times and it has not broken on me. So the color that I love and I think is totally worth it is Midnight Brown. This is not your ordinary brown. It has like a topiness to it in a little bit of a way. Let me swatch it. Oh, barely touched it very pigmented and watch it just glides i mean just glides you don't have to work to blend this out this color i mean i've done a one eyeshadow look with this color you can do a sheer wash of color on the lid you can build it up in the crease you can do a smoky eye with this color it's just beautiful wonderful wonderful formula i think this makes a great gift for someone buy someone a color you know that they love you know what I mean? Put it in a cute little, you know, sometimes I'll gift with purchases or just wrap it up in a cute little gift. I just think these are totally worth it. Okay, one more product from Burberry. When I was talking about that, I, I was just like, oh my gosh, I forgot like my second, okay, it's my second favorite blush of all time because my favorite blush of all time is NARS Oasis. Totally worth the money. I love that color. But this is luxurious. It is beautiful. And there are a lot of high-end blushes that I love. But this one, the packaging, the formula, the longevity of the blush, and the color, this color, hits every single point that, for me, it's like, yes, it's worth it, yes, yes, yes. Like, it has to hit all those points for it to be totally worth it. And it is the Burberry Blush number two in Cameo. This is a color for anybody and everybody, and it is a color you can wear with any lipstick, any eye look, any occasion. You just can't screw this up because it creates the most perfect flush on your cheeks, which would go with anything. So here is what it looks like. It is a beautiful, soft, wearable rose. And when I think of rose, I just think feminine. I think timeless. I think classic. I think chic. Like, I just f think about women 50 years ago. They'd be wearing the same shade of blush. If you've done any sort of research on like historical makeup during different time periods, Rose is a constant theme for blush throughout the years. And so this particular one is absolutely worth the hype to me. It is so buttery soft. When you, when you feel this, it is so buttery soft. Now, swatching it with your finger is not the same as applying it with a, with a brush. 
this is just one of those blushes that can be soft or you can really build it up to, you know, whatever your look that you're going for. But it just mimics a breath of rose. It's just so beautiful. It's not a super bright blush, but it's a so wearable blush. It's just mm, the epitome of femininity, I think. The last thing that I want to talk about is this. So I didn't used to do much in the world of setting sprays. Okay. Um... For the past few years, I lived in a dry climate. I didn't really, like, like my makeup didn't melt off. Um, now I'm a huge believer. I mean, I was a believer because I'd use it from time to time when I need my makeup to last all day. But if you spray your face, like you do a good primer, a good foundation, and a setting spray, your makeup will last through humidity. Trust me. Um, I love the Scandinavia one. I tried the Urban Decays. I've tried a couple from them, but I felt that they were, for my skin, were just a little bit too drying. This seems to be less drying. This is the Makeup Finishing Spray by Scandinavia. Looks like this. Um, it says oil-free, paraben-free. Yeah, it does have fragrance in it, so if you're, you know, irritated by fragrance. But I find that literally this holds my makeup on. It does not melt off. It does not disappear. Um, it doesn't even really break up. It just really helps maintain my makeup. When I have to put it on in the morning and have it look good all day and be in and out of this 95 degree humidity, <laughs> 95 degrees plus humidity is not necessarily very pleasant. But if you have a setting spray, at least your makeup will look good. So that's going to do it for my luxury high-end products that I think are totally worth the hype. I probably will do another video like this uh, because I have more things that I'm thinking of like, oh, I could have talked about this, but I'm sure this video is already going to be long enough. And I'm going to do a video of luxury products that are not worth the hype and some things might surprise you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs up if you did. If you're new, I hope you subscribe and stay a while. I'd love to have you here and we will chat soon. Bye guys.